On Monday, at 2.08 GMT, the UK government was toppled from power by Russian forces. The week before, the Kremlin had been deposed by Washington. This was all hard on the heels of the announcement that a computer virus trapped back to Mexico had changed all the WASP names in the US Senate records to Garcia and Rodriguez. That had made Carl laugh. Carl was a news junkie. He followed all the political talk and watched every battle, real time if he could, which is why he had such a bad sleep debt, because so much of the good stuff happened in different time zones. This infuriated Sarah. She was angry about the impact on his health insurance policy. It was willful, after all. Even if he argued that it was required for his job as an editor of the automated copy that was generated by his paper's AIs. The talking policy would point out that he could watch recordings. But then he would never be able to keep up. It happened too fast. At least one major international battle a day, a regime change a week, and it was speeding up. This is why, Sarah said, humans had no business in politics at all. They don't have the minds for it, don't have the processing speed. It's why, she said, there's no point in voting. You don't vote anymore. Seriously. He gawped at her over a meal, his cutlery and his jaw hanging over his plate in disbelief. He couldn't recall if it was breakfast, lunch or dinner. They all blurred into one for him. It's just an opinion poll, she said. You aren't taking part in a democracy. You're completing a market research survey to measure the effectiveness of the propaganda in the papers. Algorithms make all the decisions. They run everything. Those referendums are just for show, to make us believe that we are still in control, to stop humans thinking they've lost control of their lives to machine learning. That's not true, Carr said. You just don't want to take the time to engage. It's an excuse for apathy. People are lazy, even though we are all paid to vote now. I think it's great people don't want to vote. When they did, they made really bad decisions. No one could be bothered to read the documents they were sent, so they just randomly chose an option, or they asked their one friend who had read the documents what to do, or they got their opinions from comment pieces and papers that were owned by powerful, rich white men with their own agendas. She laughed. Don't you remember the time everyone voted to make it illegal to collect rainwater? The water companies convinced us by saying that refugees living in camps near Dover were getting water for free from the sky when everyone else had to pay for it. Now no one can collect rainwater on their roofs and we have to ration water because it's so expensive. It doesn't matter if it was a bad decision. It was democracy in action. What, the people are never wrong. The point is that people get to choose to make bad decisions if they want to. Well, I'm glad the bots decide everything now. Things are much better run. The bots do not run everything. You're totally paranoid. Government statistics say there's a 97% turnout vote for voters last year. <laughs> 97%. Well, there's your proof it's nonsense. When was there ever a 97% voter turnout, even when there was democracy? Perhaps they meant a 97% turnout of bots. It was printed in The Guardian. Well, all the papers are written by AIs now anyway. Yes, but the AIs are controlled by humans. I'm an editor, and I'm not an AI, he said. Are you sure? He scowled at her. She said, and those wars you write about, they're nonsense too. They're not nonsense. Well, they're not real. Well, of course they're not real. If they were real wars, people would die. And that would be really bad. They're just games. They're not even played by people anymore. It's just AIs battling each other faster and faster. It's meaningless. None of it touches us. Of course it does. The news on Friday said we'll all have to learn Russian. The government passed a law. Did they put it to a poll? Of course they put it to a poll. We're still a democracy. We're not a democracy. If we're not a democracy, it's only because people like you don't vote. 
No one votes. Everybody's bored by it. The constant stream of questions. How much of the budget exactly do we want to spend on health care, on education, on energy, on accommodation, on food production? Should we raise or lower taxes? Should we abolish taxes altogether? Should we increase the number of border guards? Should we decrease immigration? Should we introduce population control? How many streetlights do there need to be in Wolverhampton? That's local government. You've never been asked to vote in that. We're not in Wolverhampton. You've never even lived there. Wolverhampton might not even exist. <laughs> of course it does. How do you know? When was the last time you went to Wolverhampton? When was the last time you even went outside? Car put his knife and fork down. He was starting to doubt himself. He got up from the table and went to the window. He could see an ordinary London street. See, he said. Pulling back the curtain. It's there. It's still out there. That could easily be an image, a hologram. When did you last actually go out there? He tried to think. He put his hands to his eyes. He didn't know, he was so tired. Are you trying to drive me mad? Of course I'm not trying to drive you mad. Why would I do that? Come and sit down. But he didn't move. He was just staring down at the street. He didn't want to turn his head to look at Sarah because he knew he, because he knew that she wasn't actually there. Because he knew that he had been talking to himself again. <laughs> 